Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna learn about moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of an object is its resistance to a change in its angular motion. Colloquially, you can just think about this as being like, how hard is it to make this thing rotate? As you might imagine, the moment of inertia is related to uh, the mass of an object, right? After all, if you had something like, oh, I don't know, a, uh, a merry-go-round, but it was made of mm, styrofoam, that would be a lot easier to move than something that was made of, say, like metal. So, of course, mass matters, right? More massive means more difficult to rotate. But there's this other factor in here, which uh, is a little harder to pin down, which is the distribution of that mass. In general, objects that have their mass located farther away from the pivot point are more difficult to rotate. So to help demonstrate the concept of moment inertia and how distribution of the mass matters, uh, I made a couple of different setups here. Um, I used a little like, I don't know, wooden skewer of some kind and uh, a few metal objects and put them, in this case, close to the pivot, the pivot being this string, which is coming straight up towards the camera just about. Uh, and then on this one down here, you can see the weights are positioned farther from the pivot. Uh, then what I did was I twisted each of them up 10 times. All right, this takes a minute, but I, I just want to show you that I'm not doing shenanigans here. If, if you want to count it, right, you can watch the video, and I twisted around 10 times each. Uh, and then in the video, I get a little stopwatch in position. So once I get it twisted up, I'm going to pause um, and then zoom forward to the part that matters. And the important bit that I want you to pay attention to when I hit play on each of these is the rate at which each of these objects are spinning, right? They've got, they have their same mass, it's the same skewer, same number of metal objects. I just on one have them positioned near the center and the other they're present, positioned near the ends. And pay attention to the rate of change in their angular motion. Ready? Here goes. Well, that's a pretty dramatic difference. The one where the weights are positioned close is spinning very easily, uh, whereas the one where the weights are positioned far away are slow, right? It's taken a long time to spin around. Um, the top one already finished, right? It made it through. Uh, and this one's still going, right? It's taking way more time to complete uh, its, uh, its journey through 10 revolutions. So the point is, it's not just the mass that matters, it's the distribution of that mass. Two objects that have the same mass, but have the mass distributed at different positions will have different moments of inertia. And so when we calculate moment of inertia, we have to take those positions into consideration. For the beginning part of this unit, we will not deal with solid objects so much as what are called uh, point masses, or rather systems of point masses. These are gonna tend to look something like, oh, you've got like a barbell, and you know maybe they're the same mass, maybe not, right? But more or less we say, hey, look, there's mass there, there's mass there, uh, ig ignore the bar, all right? The, the bar's obviously there, but ignore the mass of the bar. And so when we say that the, the masses on the ends are point masses, what we're saying about them is that they are incredibly dense, all of the masses effectively in one location. Moment of inertia is measured in kilogram meters squared. Now, I don't know how to conceptualize that unit exactly, but um, where we get that unit from actually is just this formula here. Okay, so it, if, if you are taking the test and you're like, oh no, I can't remember, how, what, are, what are the units for this? I'm gonna miss that point. Oh, don't panic. It's right there in the formula. Mass is measured in kilograms. Distance is measured in meters and it's squared. Therefore, the unit is kilogram meters squared. So even if you forget it, you can derive that unit using the equation. The next concept that we've got to tackle before we really start like doing anything with moment of inertia though is center of mass. Um, this is a concept you're honestly probably familiar with because of doing things like, oh, I don't know, balancing a spoon on your finger. There we have a fantastic spoon, right? Now, now if you've ever done this before, you know you don't just put your finger like right here halfway through, right? 
if you put your finger there, it's probably gonna fall and it's gonna be the spoon end, like the, the scoopy side that's gonna fall because that's where most of the mass is, right? You wouldn't put your finger in the middle, you'd put your finger like say here, right? Very close to the scoopy part of the spoon because, well, you didn't know the term before perhaps, but that's where the center of mass is, all right? Uh, we think of gravity, by the way, as always acting at the center of mass of an object. And the reason we're going to need to know about this concept is it relates to the moment of inertia. Uh, it turns out that if I do something like, you know, spin a spoon or spin any kind of an object, the moment of inertia is always smallest if we rotate it through the center of mass. That means that if you rotate whatever the object is about some other point, such as this end or that end, the moment of inertia through any other point is going to be larger. For relatively symmetrical objects, as you might imagine, the center of mass is, you know, basically right in the middle. On the other hand, th this was really hard, by the way. Uh, if you have a Nerf dart at home, I challenge you to try and do this in like less than a minute. It's, uh, it's not easy. The rubber tip on that Nerf dart is much heavier than the whole rest of the dart. Um, so given that most of the mass is on one end, the center of mass is very close to that bit there, and therefore balancing it was a little bit tricky. All right, now you might be thinking, what does this formula up here have to do with any of those things? Uh, honestly, not that much. If you wanted to find the center of mass of something complicated, like a real object, like a Nerf dart, this summation that I wrote up here would in fact be an integral. Uh, so we, we won't do any of that kind of thing, right? Rather, this is how you would find the center of mass for, again, something like point masses. Now, in your notes packet, if you would, find example three. Example three, um, part A, is just draw the diagram. So based on the description, draw it here. I've done that for you. Go ahead and get that on your paper. Pause as long as you need to. Part B is asking us to find the center of mass. Well, okay, the formula was M x over, or the summation of mx over m total, uh, that formula maybe doesn't answer itself. Like, wh what, is, what do these things refer to? So the m, uh, of course, is, you know, each of the individual masses. x is where is that mass relative to our chosen origin? As with many problems where uh, you can choose your own origin, a wisely chosen origin makes the problem easy, and a bad origin makes the problem really hard, okay? So here are your two options for the origins. They are there or there. Don't put the origin anywhere other than one of the two ends. It's got to be the left end or the right end. Um, I'm going to use the left end as I'm working this out, but honestly, it doesn't matter. As long as you've picked one of the ends, you're going to be fine. All right, now plugging into the formula, it's the summation of m times x over m total. So for the three kilogram mass, we would have m is three, x is uh, zero. It's at the origin, it is the origin. So it is zero meters from um, itself. Uh, all right, the two kilogram mass, however, is one meter away from the origin because that's how long it says the bar is. All right, and then the total mass is five kilograms. So when we get all done with this, we're going to get the answer 0.4 meters. Uh, what does that mean? Oh, well, that's where the center of mass is relative to the 3 kilogram mass. That would be about there, which is where you kind of probably thought the center of mass would be, right? Closer to the heavier end. But specifically, it's 0.4 meters from this one. And therefore, the center of mass, for that matter, is 0.6 meters from the other one. Um, just for reference, I'm going to show you what it looks like if you chose the 2 kilogram mass as your origin. Uh, we don't, you don't need to copy this down, and you certainly don't need to do the problem twice, um, ever. Just pick one origin and go with it. But if you did pick the other end, you would get the same answer. It looks like this there, right? We worked it out and uh, we get the same answer. We get 0.6. Wait a minute, that's not the same. Whoa, those are different answers. Well, of course they're different answers. Um, they should be different because we're measuring 
relative to the other end of the object, right? It's a different number, but look, it, it's the same location, right? 0.6 meters from the 2 kilogram object is 0.4 meters from the 3 kilogram. Part C wants us to now find the moment of inertia for this system. All right, now there's a, a bit of vocabulary in there uh, or terminology that you need to pay close attention to. So pause me, read the sentence carefully. There's a phrase in there where they tell you where the pivot is, and you want to find that always. Here's the thing. If they don't tell you where the pivot is, you can't find the moment of inertia. Now, they said find the moment of inertia if the system rotates through the center of mass. That's that's the key phrase. But if they just were like, oh, yeah, we've got this system of masses uh, shown up here, right? What, what's the moment of inertia? You can't answer it. They have to tell you the pivot is here or here. We could put the pivot somewhere else, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you'll get a different answer. But they have to tell you where the pivot is because depending on the location of the pivot, you will get a different moment of inertia. So always look for where is the pivot. Now, in this case, we said the pivot is through the center of mass. And when I um, set up the work in my moment of inertia of point masses equations, um, it should maybe kind of remind you of what we did with center of mass. But please note, it's not x. Okay, x is relative to an origin. R here is always relative to the pivot. In every equation we will ever use in this unit with r, r represents distance from the pivot. So what this equation is talking about is the distance that each of those masses is from the pivot. So that means that the 3 kilogram mass is 0.4 meters from the pivot, and the 2 kilogram mass is 0.6 meters from the pivot. All right, and we type that all in, and we get this answer. Now, the later parts of this question are going to deal explicitly with the question of what happens if we put the pivot somewhere else. In part D, the new pivot is going to be located directly at the center, right? So they're saying put the pivot at the center. Now what's the moment of inertia? All right, so what you should probably do at this point is pause the video, see if you can work it out, um, and then resume the video once you think you've got it. So pause, then resume once you got it. Okay, and I hope you got this answer. Um, the calculation was, I suppose, easier because the two distances were both uh, 0.5 because our pivot was located right in the middle. Okay, all right, straightforward. Uh, and notice the answer is a little bit bigger than what we got before, right? We had 1.2 when the pivot was through the center of mass, and now we have 1.25. If you think back to what I said in the previous part of this video, I said the moment of inertia is always smallest when we rotate through the center of mass. That's always where it's smallest. It's going to be larger anywhere else. So if I put the pivot here or there or whatever, it's going to be a larger moment of inertia meaning a greater resistance to rotation. So there's always the smallest resistance to rotation for a pivot through the center of mass. All right, so now part E then wants to know where would I put the pivot to get the maximum moment of inertia? And then what would that maximum moment of inertia be? All right, like before, pause, see if you can figure it out on your own. And once you think you've got it, resume and see if you got it right. And there it is. If you put the pivot, again, as far from the center of mass as possible, which would be the extreme right end, right through the 2 kilogram mass, um, this is the calculation you get. And so 3 kilogram meters squared is the largest possible moment of inertia for this system. That is the fundamentals of moment of inertia, at least as far as point masses go. Uh, the next concept that we've got to deal with is torque. And we'll talk about how that applies to moment of inertia in another video.